Ready, folks. Uh, right in the situation here. Now we are doing oh, a bit of a busy week. How's my audio, guys? Oh, I'm not. We just put the uh, lava mics on. The best. Sounds been really noisy all of a sudden. Hmm. We just uh, let everyone know we're going. So how you're doing, folks? How has your week been? I do apologise for um, not streaming on Wednesday, because I said it's been a heck of a week. Super busy. So, um, oh, I think my camera has actually um, changed its slightly. Let me see if I can square that circle. That's about right. And my tea's not very hot. Which is disappointing. But there you go. Um, Let me know if the audio is okay, folks. Um, so, what am I going to cover this evening? Oh, I've got some exciting news. Um, also, can you see in the background my reflow oven? I'm trying to rework it at the moment. I'm having real problems talking to it. So initially I tried using my new um, ST. What's really weird about the um, uh, the ST Link version 3 set is once you add the extra board, you can't put the lid on because it sticks up too much. It's obviously not designed for that. So you end up with this kind of open top. You might call it a convertible, but it's good because you get access to all the goodies. Let me see if I can um, show that a bit better. Uh, come on, give me some focus. I don't know if it's going to focus or not. There we go. And can you see all the IOs we have at the top, which is kind of cool. Um, so things like you've got a virtual COM port in that, which is really handy. So I was trying to use the virtual COM port to reprogram to reflow oven, my old uh, T962. But I'm damned if I could get it to work. I couldn't reflash the, um, not the mobile board, the main controller board. Uh, which has an NXP, an old 
a fairly old design NXP ARM uh, microcontroller on it. And I tried that. I tried an old, um, you know, CN, what is it, CN 2104, you know, the low cost, um, what's that one? The kind of, um, not, not FTDIs, but um, the poor one's FTDI, if you like, I can't even find it now. Couldn't get that to work as well, but although I wasn't sure how good that was. I also had an FTDI, but it was a 5 volt fixed one, so I couldn't use that. So it was a bit annoying. So I ordered um, an FTDI board off, um, in the end I got it off. It was, they seemed to be quite expensive on, um, on uh, Amazon. Um, I got it off eBay. And it does have an FTDI chip on it, which is cool. So I'm going to try using that. Hopefully I'll get a chance over the weekend. Um, that's what most people use when they reprogram these ovens. I'm hoping the problem I've got is to do with... Um, You know the way that the uh, serial USB is working. You kind of have to go through this slightly elaborate mode where you put it into microcontroller into boot mode into ISP mode. That seems to work, but then the communication doesn't work with it, and it has a really weird operating frequency. Now uh, I've tried I've tried using like the command line type Linux tool and I've tried using what was it Flash Magic which is the other way it's just to do it but hadn't I didn't have any luck with any and I've worked through every possible combination I could think of and then some in terms of ball breaks and that kind of thing but I just could not get any joy out of it so I'm hoping that this puppy will give me some joy on that because if it doesn't I will be in trouble so I need to get my um, reflow oven upgraded because um, the ICE Logic Deck is a double sided board and I can't can't use that, can't use my hot plate to reflow it. doesn't work on a double sided board. You can do one side but not the other. You've got to do it in the oven so I need to get that fixed so that puppy is giving me jip um, I also um, upgraded some of the things in it um, like the um, got rid of all that crappy masking tape replaced it with Catron tape and redid the earth connection and did all those kind of mechanical things to improve it hi Laurie I was just saying um, I am using I'm trying to upgrade my um, reflow oven my um, low-cost Chinese reflow oven the T962 uh, and I've been having problems I tried to do it last weekend I tried to use my new um, ST link 3 which has a virtual com port because you need like a serial USB COM port to do it could not get it to work I tried two different things so um, I'm hoping that this weekend I might be able to fix it because I've received my uh, new FTDI COM port thing which is what most people use to up upgrade their um, controller software because I need it to operate I can't do the um, it won't be possible next week to do the ICE logic deck on a hot plate because it's a double sided board. Hot plate's only good for single sided. I've had a really busy week actually because um, we sold out of uh, Black Ice MX, I think it was on Monday or Tuesday. So I had to. Um, make a new batch of those plus I had some orders as well so it was um, a bit late 
I also had to make, I don't know if you've seen the new one ones, I, I updated the version of the um, seven segment uh, uh, mix mod. Um, and these have gotten really popular, people keep buying these, so I had to make a bunch of these up. This one went wrong. Can you tell what's wrong with this? I'm sure you'll notice, sorry. What did I do wrong with this one? Can you see the mistake? Tell you what, if you if you guess it, I'll send it to you. By the way, it does work. It works perfectly, except there's a little bit of an issue. Have a think. See if you can guess what I messed up on. Come on, focus, 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 focus. Who's focusing this now? There we go. Can you spot the mistake? So how are you doing, Laurie? So I've been really busy this week building boards and stuff. Uh, and before you ask, yes, I did actually write some rust. Uh, although I'm probably not going to have a chance to cover that tonight. Um, I've been basically revising my rust knowledge and confusing myself i think i know it quite a bit better now i did a bit of a refresher this week because i've forgotten a lot of stuff when you don't do stuff you lose the muscle memory as well as the um immediate memory of the way that you put things together so laurie's good um so ooh, snooze badger hey how you doing um Oh, it's the gender wrong. P-Mods have header pins on. That is correct. <laughs> if you want it, Snooze Badger, I will send it to you. What I do, actually, um, which is quite interesting, because uh, I did two of them. I didn't just do one wrong. I did two. Is I stick in. So I keep this now as a personal one. And I, what I've done is I've... Uh, let me see if I can get it to focus on the right bit here. But I actually put um, a right angle connector in it, on it, like a male one, to turn it into a regular female connection. Yeah. So I'm just using a right angle male to make uh, male connector, and I put the short end <laughs> into it thus and then when i connect it to the um no i can't show you on that one because i can't pick it up when i when i connect it into the um black ice it kind of sits upright like that so it's actually quite cool <laughs> but yeah give me your address news badger if you want it and i'll send you one compass mentis including the right angle connector. Well done. I am assuming you've got something that will drive a mix mod or a P mod. <laughs> yeah, I'd spent all that time and I, ha I, I had to do two for some orders that went out and I just I, I quickly, I reflowed, I did them, I soldered all the bits in, and then I looked at headers and I thought, you donkey, you know, and then had to go and do a whole another batch of <laughs> idiotic. Uh, apologies if my frame rate drops a bit. I've seen it going into the yellow and red. Hopefully that will smooth out a bit. But yeah, just typical. You know, it's because I did them first thing in the morning, I wasn't thinking. I was just thinking, get the orders out, you know, to reflow these, solder the connectors and stuff. <laughs> Dope. The other thing that I was reminded of is how difficult it is to make the Black Ice MX uh, adapter boards that have the um, free mix mods on for the ice cores. God, they take ages to solder. 
because every single one of them because it's got three mix mods 30 pins on each mix mod so that's 90 plus you've got a 26 pin uh, 26 pin debug and comms header so there's 116 joints to solder on each of those uh, Black Ice MX carriers and I'd forgotten because I haven't built any in ages oh my god I spent the whole day just making a small batch luckily I, I've got my um, my uh, JBC iron is it sticking up there which is so much better um, so yeah I've had a bit of a tricky busy week so I didn't entirely do what I'd intended to do this week because I seem to be just catching up on all counts working on bits and bobs that needed sorting out I had to also clean the area up a bit my work my lab was getting a bit um, a little bit messy let's say uh, I also had to sort through the components because I needed to make sure I have everything ready for the ice logic board and the um, sorry the ice logic deck and the um, tiles that I'm making um, I mean the PCB is due to arrive on Wednesday next week so I've got a few components that were missing so I had to order them from Mauser but they're not coming I don't think until Tuesday or Wednesday is what they're telling me now which is a shame however miracle of miracles um, guess what arrived today from our friends at JLB, JLPCB, JLCPCB. So these actually arrived. These were meant to arrive on Wednesday as well. I mean, wow, well done, DHL, getting those through quick. So we're going to do, a, you know, a, an opening and take a look at those. Let me just, whilst I remember. I've got to put my um, FTDI stuff with the reflow of them. Hold on. So I don't lose these. Otherwise, I shall be in trouble. Get my components there. Sticking out the back. Ready as well. Um, so, yeah, busy, busy week, really. But let's do an unboxing, shall we? Oh, Snooze Badge has already got uh, two digit digilent version, so it doesn't need it. Okay, no problems. Um, let's have a look, see what's in the box, man. So, this is the way they come. And normally, what accompanies these um, boxes is you normally get two. What, the delivery I normally get from JLPC, JLC PCB is looks something like this. That's normally what I get. So I get the big things with the stencils and then I get the blue box. But this time I just got the blue box because I was really careful to minimize the size of the uh, stencils. So um, stencils are actually underneath all of the PCBs which is cool so we take a look at them so let's just take them out and random so the first one we've got uh, the proto one you've probably already seen these but let me um, oh my cutters these are really handy cutting this stuff so let's see proto proto uh, tile I'll take a say that so that top one there is a 0.1 inch header in stick um, surface mount 0.1 header on and then on the other side of course you've got the normal um, tile 0.05 inch header 1.27 mil oh, I still like to focus on that it's interesting 
just too close. But um, so that will go down with that header down, and then you can actually add a header on top. Plus all the I/O lines are on the first first row, and then you can solder those in. It works, you know, much like the previous proto boards that we have. Uh, I don't think there's anything new on there. Uh, I've got an I squared C header on the top, just a regular header, 0.1 inch power rails on bottom and top, a bit breadboardish. So I've got some of those for testing. Um, what's next in the party pack? We've got uh, the breadboard one. I wonder if I've got the right connectors for these. So, just to remind you, on the um, one I did for the um, carrier, the MX carrier, if you look at the uh, this, it's very loose. It moves about quite a bit the way that the breadboard sits in there. I'll give you a better view on that. Can you see how it moves about? So I've tightened that up a bit, so it'd be interesting to see what that's like. I don't know if I've got the connectors. To populate that, hold on. Now, what if we want the one, two, three, four, five, five, tens? Uh, is that four? No, I can't use those. Sorry, I'm just going through my header drawer to see if I've got anything of the right dimensions. Andy without searching too much. I'm just going to see how well, it was a bit tighter. Put some of these the other side. Hold on. Number of these headers in the right size. I'm going to cut those shorter. These too long. So I can do two of those. Hold on, what length of these? Even long ones. Might have to go and raid my um, my feather drawer. Look at that! Look at that! How long are those? One, two, let's try something. Let me just check. These might be the right size to do half and half. Back in here. Me dragoon. Um, we need to cut this in half. With my trusty um, craft knife. Put 
magnifies on this. Mm -hmm. Just for a sec, I'll go like this. That one. Yeah, that's all in one sec. Yeah, these don't always work perfectly, these things. That gives you an idea. And five way. I only have a few headers. Some of these I've had for a long time. Obviously these aren't soldered down at this point. Look at the board. Put it down somewhere. The pussy breadboards. Do 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 do. You see it just now. What do I do with it? I had it in my hands just a moment ago. I've placed it somewhere. Not 
it on the floor. Honestly, move my head if it wasn't screwed on. Guys, what did I do with the breadboard? Is there just a second ago? Right. You wait, I'll find it now, I've got another one out. So I thought it was in here. Wow. Actually, it's still not enough. It's still quite loose, I think. There's still some play. So I'm having to um, lean the headers in. them to meet. Not quite there look. We'll have to take a bit more off on the next revision. I'll leave that to one side so I remember. Cool, okay. So that's the breadboards. Um, what's next? Double P mod. So this is the super tile adapter. The double P mod. That's the back. Not a great deal on this, but it basically enables, you know, on the super tile part of the board, it means I can put in P mods, which is kind of cool. Shiny. Um, do I have some P mods handy? Nice. 
So yeah, there's two ways of doing this. This is the obvious way, putting the connectors on. Or if you want to have the alternate um, angle. Come on, focus your bugger. I think it's just there, there we go. So in this case, this would sit on this way, and the P mods are on the top, and then the P mod peripheral will plug in thus, you know, like that. Or the other way of doing it is you actually put them on the bottom, which is kind of neat and it makes them lower. So this is just like you having the P-Mod on the P-Mod connectors on the board itself, on the logic bench. So in other words, it will go that way up. You have to hold it otherwise it will fall over. Yeah. So that goes onto the board. You know, like, I wonder if this will work. They'll probably will fall out. Hold on. Just to illustrate the point. So it would be that, like that. Which is my preferred way of doing it. It's kind of neat. But when you have them that way, you'd have to flip the uh, PCF order, the row order, for that to work. So that's cool. Just so put that over there. It's the P mod double P mod adapter. Um, uh, snooze badge is going to get something to eat. Enjoy. Um, I've got the seven segment tile. Um, so this is just a tile version of the seven segment um, P mod, really, double P mod. Let me. Um, I've got just a few of these. <laughs> That's layer one. I've got more than one layer on them. These are going quite well. So uh, underneath is all the components that you need. So you wouldn't, you won't see these because they'll be on the underneath the board where the connector is. Um, is that the right way up? Come on, focus your bugger. So you've got like the resistor arrays. The uh, the FETs, the P FETs for driving the cathodes, and then the pull up resistors, and the connector header down here, and then on the top, 
you put the display because obviously you want to be able to see that so that would fit on Okay. So on the top, what you see is that, which is quite neat. One of the um, aesthetics with these tiles is a bit of space on the PCBs. You're going to see a lot more. Uh, space on some of these because they're up the other way if you know the the user facing part of it can be um a bit neater in some ways focus it's weird how it decides to focus sometimes on that still focused on me so that's the seven segment one. Time to put one of those together as well. Put that over there. Which is cool. Um, motor tile one. So this is the motor tile. Um, done this at a right angle to the others for some reason. I can't remember why. I think because the dual motor driver from which I started um, was had this orientation. So I just kind of continued in that um, general um, orientation um, and I, I'm still waiting for a few components for this I need the uh, current sense resistors strangely so that's going to be good and that has some you know screw terminals on here which will be interesting because Those go on thus. Um, like but in reality, it's going to be that way up. And now you're thinking, wow, well, how do you screw those in then? Well, you can screw the wires in before you put the tile on, obviously. Or um, you just turn the ice logic board up and you'll be able to get to the connector. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute because we need to look at that. Um, similarly, the um, the final uh, tile that we have which is the um, oh, what's going on this? is the uh, VGA tile
Uh, and it's very simple. The VGA tile is basically just like a flash DAC um, from a two, you know, HC two four five buffer, non-inverting buffer. Excuse my uh, chewed fingers. Um, And then again that faces down so I need to show that somewhere here I should have a relevant connector From the uh, higher echelons of my shelf. So, um, these are the tiny, um, how does the audio connector connect from the FPGA pins on the FPGA tile, on the VGA tile? Are there resistors or clusters? I think there are resistors. Hold on. Yeah, that fits. It's slightly loose. I might, I might be able to tighten the holes up. That's the way that the audio connector fits in. Quite a nice little dinky um, audio connector. You can see the connectors on top here. Look. Come on, focus your focus. I'll check in a sec, because I've forgotten off the top of my head. I know there's resistors. I'm just trying to remember if there was um, caps as well. Bear with me just a second. This footprint should already work before it takes a little bit of um, matching from memory. Oh, I've been to one of these things. Anyhow, VGA connector goes in like that. So you're looking at the top. 
top side. In my Storm AV tile, which is kind of analog video audio, but again, that goes down like that. Components face down. And then next to that goes the audio. Audio connector. So it looks like that. Basically. Um, let me just check um, and answer your question, Laurie. Let me show you the schematic, guys, and then you can see. Hold on. Um, so that's the schematic for the uh, tile. If we look closely at the uh, audio, it's just resistors. Yeah. Um, yeah, I try to limit the components on there, really. I mean, the reason that you'd use caps is to make it DC blocking to take any bias off, any DC bias off. Um, but in this case, it's mostly going to be used to go into, um, I mean, you could drive a speaker from this. It's being driven at uh, 3 volts 3 not going to be very loud but you probably want to put it into an amplifier or something depending when you could use it to drive a, bu a buzzer but it's going to be a bit weak um, at 3 volt 3 you're going to be a bit limited and it has a 75 ohm impedance and I'm just reusing the other two 75 ohm resistors that I have in the array so I'm using two of them to do the uh, synchronization signals here so they were left over um, so it provides a little bit of resistance in line with the coil. So if you if you do attach it directly to something with a low impedance, you know, like an eight ohm impedance or something like a speaker, then um, it will limit the current a little. Stop the FPGA from gasping as it has to try and deliver the current. It does current limit itself anyhow in these things, but I better put my mics back on. You probably can't hear me. Probably. Probably just hear my fan. Oh, I've just tipped it on the floor. Very good. Um, one thing I want to check on here is. Um, D L D There we go. God. 
have my um, excuse us for locking up for some reason. More than that is. I must have bent them. Overuse, possibly. Myself with it, I don't I? Oh, so that was difficult to get out. Um, So here we go, that's the back side, you can see the uh, battery clip there, but we also have a few other components such as the uh, SD card connector and then a lot of passives, mainly decoupling caps, like the, especially on the FPGA. And then the front, a bit of logic deck. Uh, so we'll fit it in. Let me get back to the um, to pick, make it a bit clearer. Rather shiny. Um, don't forget, I've got these cutouts here. These are important. That's what we're going to have a look at in a sec. With respect to these tiles shiny 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 I'm just thinking of all of those components I've got to put on these next week my golly my golly a lot of little ones um, there's a few interesting things to check um, what's this link Oh, the tiny synth, right. We'll have a look in a sec. Okay, so one of the things I was thinking about is when we have connectors on here, I want to see what the clearance is. See if these things will fit. I think these screws are slightly short. I think these are six more rather than seven. That should be seven, but that will give us an idea anyhow. So what you get if I look at it I'm looking at it upside down obviously. Um hold on.
Mm. Okay. So what you see is this. So if we look at it from the underside of the board, can you see how the connectors come through on the underside? That's what the cutout's for. So if you've got components that are taller, you know, than the height between where the top of the tile is and where the uh, logic deck is, which is a uh, seven mil effectively. So you can cater for taller things. So I know this is upside down, but just to stop it falling out. That's what the point of having those cutouts is for. The, so you can do that. And this fits nicely in this case. Let me get a better focus on this. Sorry, saying that looks a lot more solid than VGAP mod. Yeah, you know, that's half the point of going down this route is you can build something. And these things screw together, you know. I know I'm just putting spaces together here. It's a bit odd. But normally you bolt them in. You can even, um, for anti-vibration, you can add things like rubber washers if you want to. Um, and you can use, you know, screw lock, that kind of thing. Or you can use thread locked washers to give you even more stability. It's kind of cool. And that's kind of you know that's, that's what we're trying to achieve is that kind of effect which is nice and from the top I'm going to lose my audio connection yeah. then we've got a nice smooth surface top just the connectors are coming out underneath which is kind of cool Um, so the other one I wanted to try was the um, terminals on the motor. Right. You kind of have to make these to work out whether it works or not. You don't realise until you physically make these whether it's, it works or not. as a physical design you know <clears throat> it's a kind of touchy feely thing probably be easier once I've soldered the boards up and stuff but you get the idea so this is the kind of the motor board really It is um, all under these stuck together. Oh, these are different connectors. <laughs> That's interesting. That's two types. How oh, very interesting. These um terminal blocks should actually come together but 
These are of a slightly different dimension to the other ones I've got. I don't know where these other ones came from. I haven't got the uh, right angled um, sensor connectors yet, but there you go. So look, obviously I'm upside down at this point. Um, so that's nice and flush. I'll just tip it down you will see so you can still get to the screws from the underneath and screw things in but they're nice and out of the way and obviously this is upside down normally it would be this way up. so on the top get that kind of flat appearance again works nicely and that fits perfectly with that slot that's just about harsh actually if you look closely almost fit not bad for a first go cool so I like that. And you can see the full cut out there at the bottom. Come on, take this your bugger. I can't work out why this camera doesn't focus at certain distances. It seems to be very temperamental. There we go. Voila. How cool is that? Nice. So I've got some fun putting some of these together over the next week or so. Um, let me just unscrew this. So where are we in terms of... Oh, one minute. I've forgotten one. So that's the... Um, that's the motor tile. This is the AV tile. Retro AV tile, or whatever you want to call it. Let's go over that. So I'll probably be able to build some of these um, tiles over the weekend because I have all the components for some of them, not all of them. Um, now, unfortunately, even though the PCBs have arrived early, I do not have all the components for the um, logic tile. The rest of them, as I say, are there's only a few of them missing. There's um, an inductor and a few resistors. Oh, and a uh, one more. 
And it's two resistor arrays values that I don't have. There's an inductor and something else coming on Monday. Oh, Tuesday. Scheduled for Tuesday for this. Got everything else, just those that haven't come. So the final piece in the equation that we've got in here is the um, mezzanine, which I ordered as well. So let's have a look at that. How are we doing for time? Eight twelve. I've got to finish about nine today. And the good thing about this is they got the slot right. Yay! Can you see me through the slot? Slot mask tile. There's our mezzanine tile. Which is kind of cool. And I'm hoping they've done the USB connectors as well because um, I changed the footprint on those. They look good. So it's kind of cool. And that one, of course. It's on here like that. Only suspended. And then the camera comes up through this slot here. So even though the components are on there, you've got the uh, FPC connector. Here, which is slightly offset, and then the FPC bends through, comes through the slot, and on top bends over, and then the LCD lays on top. Just a bit of double sided tape, hold that in place, I guess. So that's kind of cool. Let me see if the uh, USB is a snug fit or not. assuming it's in here but I don't really it might not it might be in the um, in the box let's see it in there hold on these are the uh, components for the build Um, Hyper RAM in a massive bag, uh, USB interfaces, um, Connectors for the tiles. More connectors for the tiles. Teeny tiny little buttons for the Logic Ice Logic deck. Uh, some crystals. Ah, what are these? Whole crap load of. Uh, Real time crystals 32.7738 low frequency crystals. Those were difficult to get hold of, I had to buy quite a few of them. Um, FPGAs, um, these are the ones I'm using for the test build, it's just a handful of them. 
Now, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the... Um, Static or high voltage diodes for the USBs, PSD ones. Okay, with the SD card, SD cards, sockets. Mezzanine. Having spent so much time getting hold of the damn things. Right, so these are the uh, teeny tiny USB C's we are using. Shiny, but very small. Now, do those fit nicely on the new footprint? Fingers crossed. Oh, yes. Now, in fact, there's a little room to spare. They're quite tight. We like that. That's good. Nice. Come on, focus your better. Come on, you can do it, Cameron. You can do it, come on. Nicely, maybe if I do it that way, you see, fits in nicely, which is good. We like that, so there we go. There's our mezzanine. Very good. Let me put that back with the other USB connector before I lose them. Okay. 
Excellent. Um, so let me put the mezzanines over there as well. So we've got those. Let's put the. Uh, yeah, I still do that. I do like that. That's kind of sexy. Bit like some kind of amazing starship. Bit like a, uh, you know. Like a Galaxian. That takes me back a bit. Um, that's that. So, um, along with those, of course, we've got the um, sensors as well. And these are dinky because I've got them to do them smaller. It just makes it easier for the prototype. Thing. Don't need big ones. So, this one is for the. Uh, the motor board. Look how dinky this is. Very small. They don't need to be big when you look at the size of the tile. Um, yeah. Still bigger than the tile. So that's the motor stencil. Not everything required stencils. Um, so, for example, the P mod is just through hole components, so that didn't require any. The breadboards, just through hole as well, so it doesn't require any. Um, this is the stencil for the mezzanine, which did require, obviously, um, stencil. Mezzanine stencil. Then we have the um, seven segment tile. Very simple. And get a few components on that one. I can also use this to just do the header. The ones that I don't have stencils for. Just use the top half. Or what you can do is you can tape over the other part. I often tape over unused holes. And it saves a bit of money when you're ordering lots of stencils and stuff. That's the AV tile. If you look closely. Uh, you can see the uh, HC74. Sorry, 245 buffer and the resistor arrays. This is interesting. That's the top. Um, that's because I break out some of the extra pins, I think, so that you could op optionally um, break out the pins that are unused on the AV tile. I've done this on a couple of them. So this is on the top of the board. You could put a, a 6 pin 0.1 inch surface mount header. So you've got things like the analog um, IOs, the mix signal IOs on there and stuff. And the resets and things like that. And then finally the, the bigger one of them but again, this is still small compared to the normal frame size stencils. Just to give you an idea, the normal uh, frame size stencils I have. Um, they were like this. That's for a uh, seven segment P mod. Look how big the damn thing is. Compared to the size of me, it's obviously not very well taped on either. That's because I used that earlier. And I have loads of these hanging about. They take up so much bloody room. Driving me nuts. 
So it's nice to have these much smaller ones. So for the uh, Ice Logic deck, ah, uh, that explains a lot. We've done it that way around. I kind of wanted them to do it the other way around, but there you go. I don't like the way they've cut the edge of that. It's a bit odd. So you've got top on the top and the bottom on the bottom. Just to show you the size, that's a bit smaller. And guess what it is yet? So, uh, it's very shiny. A lot more holes on this one, apertures on this one. Because that's the uh, ice logic board. You've got the top half which is for the underside and then the bottom half which is for the top side which is kind of cool it does amaze me how um, low cost these things are compared to what they used to be Work out what those holes are. Those ones. Like little Windows logos. Oh, I know. Those are for the battery holder. So it's a surface mount. Oh, that's a lot of post. Cool. Yeah, I like that gonna be a lot of fun but be a lot of fun if it works or when I get it to work I should say be positive there you go the unboxing so as you can imagine I have a fairly busy week next week in terms of uh, construction Fun, fun, fun. Some of this stuff. Um, I'll probably make some tiles up first because I can do a few of those this weekend. Um, or first. I say this weekend. This weekend's going to be quite busy here, anyhow. Generally. I don't know how much chance I'm going to have. Um, so I need to get those. Um, Files done first. When I say weekend, as I say, it may be um, Monday, Tuesday, etc. I have a time we get there. Let's take a more room than I thought. Together, having spent so much time sorting the damn stuff this week, so I'll probably get some tiles made up in the early part of the week, and then hopefully I'll have all the components ready to do to do the. Um, the ice logic decks hopefully mid to the second part of the week what I'm hoping for is that by the end of the week I've got something that I can try and bring up um, which I may be able to do on the stream if I stream on the latter part of the week rather than the earlier part I don't know if it's of any interest to anybody watching me trying to assemble this not or at least the first one 
let me get the um, first one done myself. Perhaps without any time or stream pressures. Uh, and then maybe we can try and bring it up on the stream next week. And it will likely be later in the week rather than earlier would be my guess. So that would be kind of cool. Looking forward to that. Any questions on the stuff I've shown? Uh, all looks good, Laurie says. These bubbles are kind of cool. Um, which you need the reflow oven for. Um, I need the reflow oven for this for two reasons. One is because it's a bit bigger than my hot plate. Um, but secondly, it's double sided. You can't hot plate a double sided board, I'm afraid. It just doesn't work because the components get on the way on one side. Once you've done one side, so you need to use the oven. Which is why I've got to get it, you know, sorted. So I've also got to do that. I was hoping to try and do that over the weekend if I got a chance. The rest I can do on the hot plate. Yeah, that's right, Laurie. And I will do them on the hot plate. It's quicker. You know, when you're doing things like, uh, you know, small tiles like that. I can do them, I can knock them out on the hot plate much better than in the oven. I know in the oven you can do several at once, but it's just quicker and easier. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of each to start with anyhow. Once I know I've got one of each working, then I'll look at making a couple of sets up. Um, that won't be next week, that'll be the following week, depending on how successful. Uh, next week is really going to bring up. If I have some success and I can get some stuff working, then it's worth me making a couple more and getting those out. I know I'd get one out to you, Laurie, obviously. Um, I probably also want to get one out to Sylvain because he probably needs to um, um, get his uh, HGL working on the high prime side. Um, also notice that on that mezzanine board we have the uh, USB but he could use that for his um, SOC if he wants to and then he can use his own DFU if need be oh, so that's it for me uh, on the unboxing um, what I'll do is leave the keys out ready for me to get soldering and then we can go back from here Look how good I am doing that as I go along. Uh, get the other things in here. And here. And that's a bed for this one. And that's a bed for this one. That's a bed for this one. And I'll close that one up. Temporarily. And this garbage that can go. These scissors can go back. Mm. So yeah, it's been a busy week. It's going to be a busy weekend too. And an exceptionally busy next week. But exciting construction stuff. Finish my tea, it must be really cold. 
So what have you been up to, uh, Laurie? You've been doing some uh, ULX4. How near is um, Goran on that? So all that's on that VGA board is just the buffer, the resistor ladders, horizontal and vertical sync, and then the audio via 75 ohms, and then the mixed signal header. Oh look, mixed digitals, digitals, signals. That's like backwards. It's half forward, it's half backwards. What's happening there? That's weird. Just have to um, correct that. Uh, Lloyd says I've been um, building Saxon sock variants for the ULX3 for EMAD. Um, he seems to be doing Surly's tests on the ULX4M. Cool. Yeah, that's tricky stuff for Surly's. Um, and I've been learning Rust. Oh, good man. I've been revising Rust a bit this week. Uh, I've got a list of things I need to do in Rust on the Black Crab stuff. I've got a new spy driver that I want to try with the Flash. One where I can um, hopefully switch the IOs, interestingly. Um, and I also need to write uh, Flash programming for it. Uh, if I get a chance, I might use the DFU stuff as well. But that may be ways off. I'm glad you're learning Rust, Lloyd. It's a really good language. Um, I want to do a stream uh, on GPIOs at some point, which I'm preparing some content for. Um, because I think people struggle with that. They struggle with understanding GPIOs when they're used in Rust because Rust um, tries to do them in a very safe way and <clears throat> it's rather pedantic but for good reason, good purposes. So I'm trying to put together some notes and things so I can talk about that because I think that's one of the tricky pieces that people hit very early on when they look at Rust from an embedded point of view and it throws them off. It certainly threw me off the first time I saw it. Um, so I'd like to do a stream where I just talk about that stuff um, so that people understand how these things work and why um, they've made the kind of decisions that they have with the um, you know in the how layers the way that they're uh, presenting the um, functionality of the GPIOs so kind of demystify it break it down explain it from basic principles um, and then that way that may help people coming to it uh, for the first time and perhaps prevent some of the shock and some of the frustration, some of that what the is going on with this? Um, I'm still using um, PyCharm, which is part of the kind of IntelliSense family. JetBrains, I quite like it. I've used it for ages because I use PyCharm for Python. Um, but there is a Rust plugin for it that does all the Rust analysis, inline analysis as well, which is quite handy. There's also a Rust debugger, but I haven't played around with that because I just use GDB at the moment and cargo um, hooks for GDB, so I don't actually need that. But they do have a debugger which I want to play around with at some point. Um, I started using VS Code. 
Yeah, now VS Code's good as well. That's got good, uh, good, you know, color syntax highlighting support. It's also got Rust Analyzer support as well. I think Esden uses um, Visual Code Studio to do his Rust editing as well. So that's, yeah, it's a good tool. Go for it. Um, I, I've got Visual Studio Code uh, installed on this as well. Uh, I don't know if I've got the Rust plugins installed on it. So I might well um, try that as well. Uh, it's not my first preference. So at the moment, you know, the um, quite like PyCharm as my interface. Uh, JetBrains are coming out of a new editor actually, which I've applied to um, beta test, which is a very, um, I can't remember how they phrase it, it's not basic, but it's like complete rewrite. So you've been watching some videos. Oh, I'll have a look at those perhaps. Hold on, copy. I'm just going to, I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I didn't really want to run the browser. Okay, that's going to open it up. Then I'm going to be in trouble. Let's get rusty. Getting started with Rust video. I, haven't, I don't think I've seen this one. I might, I might watch it actually. Um, Nori, do you rate it? Um, you saw the links I posted for the embedded stuff, didn't you? They weren't videos. They were like books. Oh, the Rust Lang book is. So it's a video of get, using the Rust Lang book. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll take a look. I haven't seen the videos. I remember I started when I first, well, when I first learnt Rust, there wasn't a book, but that was many years ago, and it's completely changed. And I only ever wrote, I wrote some embedded Ethernet tests using it, but that was a long, long time ago. Um, but when I restarted the uh, Rust stuff again, um, I think it was this year or last year or whenever I looked at it, I used the uh, Rust Lang book, the online version. But I didn't watch the videos. Um, so I'll take a look at that. That's probably quite a good way of um, good way of doing it with the video. Um, and then you, you need to do the embedded. There's a couple there's two books, embedded books that I listed. The one, the practical one, is using the discovery board. And the other one goes in a lot more depth and detail. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing something similar, at least do an intro for, um, you know, Logic Bench. Um, but as I say, I want to cover the GPIOs first because that's certainly an obstacle for a lot of people. It's a bit of a shock. There are a lot of videos, but there's a lot of language features. There certainly is, and there's a lot to take in, and some of it's quite tricky. Um, th there are lots of bits of it that I still don't fully get. You know, confuses the hell out of me. Some of it. The lifetime stuff is really tricky. Uh, that does my head in. I mean, I understand what they're doing, but it's like, you know, uh, it's pretty uh, hairy, you know, and it just looks very odd. Uh, I did look at the discovery board book and was contemplating getting a discovery board to try the examples. 
it's worth it I did it I went through that exercise myself because I thought it, you know I like to learn by doing so uh, when I first looked at um, revisiting rust on the embedded side I, I ordered one of those boards and went through the exercise it's actually quite an old board but you can still get it I don't think it costs much it's like a tenner or between 10 and 20 pounds I think it's not, it's not a lot of money Uh, and it does get you through some of the basics, gets you doing something, you know. Sometimes that's what you need to have something working, even if it's just a few LEDs. And it's kind of cool how they do the kind of compass thing with the LEDs, which is nice, if nothing else. I've got that somewhere, I don't know where I put it. Hold on. Ooh, hold on, I think I know. I saw it the other day when I was sorting through my stuff. Ta da! That one. Because the 303 is an F4. Um, it was made ages ago. But the cool thing about it is the. Um, I mean, it has an IMU thing on there, which is kind of nice. But. The really cool thing is the um, is getting out of the box. It's a pain in the ass. Seems to remember. Ouch! But yeah, as you get all the uh, LEDs in that circle to make like the compass thing. And of course, the other good thing about this is you get the uh, you get a free debugger, an ST link on the top, just like you would do with the um, you know the nucleos and stuff. If you can't get hold of one, let me know, Laurie, and I can send you this because I'm not using it. But, um, But as I say, I definitely got one and it was worth worth my while. If nothing else, you can just get something to work and you've got something to follow along with on the tutorials. <laughs> Which one are you looking at then? Yeah. It's the same one. I mean, it's a bit outdated. I don't know if you can still get the IMU on that. It's the same as mine. But is that, yeah, they show it with a green mask, and I think mine had a blue mask. Back order today. Stock arriving week commencing 4th of the 1st, 23. Did you read that? You might not be able to get hold of them. If 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 you can't, just let me know, and um, I'll send you mine. So I've got to send you one of these boards at some point. Anyhow, I could send it all together, or I could send it before then if you want it. I think I've got your address somewhere. I'm sure I have. I've sent you loads of stuff before. But yeah, if it's out of stock everywhere, j just just shout, Laurie, and I'll send you mine because I'm not using mine anymore. It's done. It's done. Finished. The next board I'm running Rust on will be the um, Ice Logic board, and maybe Black Ice in it. So I'm already running on that. Right, that's it for me this evening. Um, I will be on Discord later, and uh, possibly a little bit over the weekend, and obviously next week when I'm building stuff. If you've got any other questions on 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 the, um, the proto builds I'm doing, or anything around that or on the rough side, uh, let me know, because um, I will be around. Um, but thanks for joining me, guys and girls. Thank you.
and let me know if you need that board Laurie and I'll get it in the post tomorrow if you do. Later.